Hello there, my name is Mark Barnabas, your data protection pal, and for those of you who are celebrating Good Friday and Easter Sunday, Happy Easter, and may you have a blessed weekend. So on to this week's uh, updates on data protection and cybersecurity, and quite a few interesting articles I must say. So the first one is in regards to Line. Uh, some of you may not know this messaging platform, it is very popular in Japan, uh, Taiwan, Thailand and other parts of Southeast Asia as well. So line is out of line because somehow there's been a weakness in their protection of data from the users. So let's look out for what's going to happen in weeks to come and we'll be giving you more updates on what's wrong with line, just like WhatsApp, isn't it? So, but the biggest news in terms of data breaches this fortnight is this company called MobiWeek Quick and this is apparently the biggest data leak in India even bigger than the one earlier uh, over the last year uh, Big Basket where 40 million data was lost in this case it is 10 crores if you're not familiar what 10 crores mean one crore is 10 million so 10 crores of data means one 100 million user data has been lost. That is quite a lot of data. So, if you're in India and you are getting scam calls, do not be surprised. This is your possible reason. Wow, 100 million. That's almost 10% of the entire Indian population. This is crazy. So, on to regulators and regulations all over the world. You have Russia. So who says Russia is not concerned about personal data? They are, and there is a Russian regulators who are getting serious on how personal data should be processed. So you can read this article from Baker McKenzie, and it's Baker McKenzie, not just anybody, right? So this is very serious. Data protection is really happening all over the world, not just in Africa, Asia, but even Russia. And look at this article. Even in China, there are becoming more aware of privacy and today we have this a central bank in China who is talking about data privacy and it seems that data privacy is becoming a form of branding perhaps in China so what are we as SMEs and business doing to use privacy as a form of branding so all you branding folks out there please uh, leave your comments below and Perhaps give our viewers uh, some tips on how to use privacy as a form of branding because I believe it's the next important thing for businesses. And not just again to Russia, we hop over to the US where there have been talks about having a federal law for privacy, not just uh, in the individual states. And we all know that CCPA in California is probably the most stringent but we are looking forward to a federal law in US with regards to personal data protection. And you know, as a data protection practitioner and talking about privacy, there are several uh, definitions uh, in this universe. And what irks me is that sometimes the definitions are different from continents to continents. So I myself as a practitioner am calling for a universal glossary for data protection and privacy. Just like the word data protection and privacy. Apparently in Asia, we seem to call it data protection. In the Western countries, they call it privacy. Well, they are both right uh, in their own context. So I just be very careful. Privacy and data protection is how you say it. So if you have the same problem, leave your comments below and I think we share the same uh, views on this. <laughs> so on to something more serious, um, we are still in the midst of recovering from COVID-19 pandemic and this work from home phenomena is going to continue and a stark reminder by this article on JD Supra, one of the leading uh, articles uh, on privacy and risk management we have to consider risk management when we have staff working from home. I mean, my girlfriend works from home all the time despite uh, working for a very 
big company, yes. So we have to be very mindful that while employees are working from home, we have to really uh, consider how to protect the employees and more so to educate the employees to protect the company as well. So if you are a business owner or a part of a company, what are you doing to ensure that staff working from home are safe? Are staff's networks fine? Uh, the staff's computers are safe? So I know big companies are very well equipped, but what about SMEs? What about small companies? What about monopreneurs? So consider all these risks when you are doing your business or working for a company. So, cyber attacks. This is an article about cyber attacks in Asia. And it seems that companies in Asia takes one week to remediate cyber attacks. And there are so many companies that are being attacked. And this company called Sophos is giving a report. Read about this. It's very important because if you are in Singapore and Asia, you might want to know about this. So finally, my name is Mark Barabas. I hope you have a great time this week and have fun over Easter. And well, be safe and please share and subscribe. Good day and goodbye.